Hey, everybody. I'm Jeff Benia, and we're going to talk a little about creating reality shows today. I've been lucky enough to have uh, several concepts and unscripted content that I've created, optioned by several producers in Hollywood. And I created a, 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 a course on Udemy.com on how to create, package, and pitch a reality TV show. So we're going to go over a couple of things that are, is, are actually in the uh, course. And today I wanted to talk about opportunities. Sometimes uh, there are opportunities everywhere and you're just not aware of them. Uh, for example, if you're interested in doing a, a docu-series and you walk into a, uh, to get your car fixed and a guy happens to be really uh, just an over, oversized character, right? And maybe they specialize in certain types of cars or something. Well, you know, you can ask yourself, would this make a good docu-series? So that's how it all starts, just looking around and, and seeing if there are opportunities there to create content. Uh, so the course that I have actually goes, uh, it's pretty extensive and it, it takes you from the very beginning all the way to um, pitching your, your show ideas to executives in the room. What I wanted to do today is just kind of go over a, a section where I talk about how we went from paper to actual uh, a show reel that was created by a production company. So I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the content here that we created, but the backstory is we were casting for a particular show and uh, Tracy Bingham from uh, Baywatch, she happened to be one of the uh, persons that showed up to, uh, to audition for the show and she looked great. And so what happened is I was thinking about her and, and I said, you know, Baywatch is a really, really, I mean, that show is still going. It, uh, it's showing all over the world and um, she just, she had a, just great charisma. She was, uh, uh, you know, just great to, to have her there and get to know her. And so what I did is I created an opportunity out of that. I ended up uh, calling her, her manager and just chatting and finding out what she was doing. And I, I happened to ask her uh, if she might be interested in some kind of unscripted show. And as it turned out, she, her manager turned out to be her sister and actually actually had some ideas already. Uh, she had a title called Queen Bees. And when she told me she had two of, two of the sisters, three all together, I thought, wow, now a lot of people don't know that. So we started thinking about it. And what we ended up doing was uh, sitting down with uh, her manager and coming up with the concept so we came up with the concept and then we put it on paper. So the paper, basically uh, this little section is called from paper to show reel. Uh, in other words, creating a demo reel or a sizzle reel. Uh, so what we did is I wanna show you here, once we got the ideas down, we created the, the paper and uh, let's see how go here and I will show you the document that we came up with. Okay, so this is the document right here. And the title that we decided on was Queen Bees. And so the, the basic idea was to have Tracy go back to Boston to be with her family and then with her family, she would, uh, you know, just whatever hijinks or whatever was going on with the family, um, we would capture. And what you may not know about docuseries that you see on TV, the Kardashians, any of those docuseries, they are scripted to someone, some degree. What happens is they'll shoot multiple storylines and in which everyone seems to be uh, panning out excuse me, they will basically follow that up and they may create some storylines for that. So they may create uh, an actual story to go with a particular event that's going on in their lives. So they are scripted, even though they're supposed to be not scripted at all. So what we did is once we had the idea, we put the idea down on paper and you can see here, we, we create a little cover for it. 
And um, we mentioned at, at the very top there, we mentioned some other shows that this would be similar to, such as uh, the Kardashians, obviously, the um, the Housewives, Hogan's, Hogan You Best, I think that was on at the time. Then we give a little bio about Tracy and, and what she's was has been doing and, and her achievements. And then we get into the cast. The cast was uh, Tracy, Jenna, and her sister, Britt. Give a little bio on them. And then what we do is we create potential storylines. So like I said, even though you're watching a reality show that you may think is completely spontaneous, and uh you know really happening believe me they have story editors on these shows so what we'll do is we'll create storylines that we think you know are possible right and some of them could be you know a little bit crazy or not but we'll create the storylines and then what we did with this is we give this to the agent and the agent start sending it out to all the different uh, production companies in town that do this type of um, programming, this type of alternative show. So we'll send it out. And that basically got us a few meetings and uh, we were able to uh, go into the meetings and with the girls and pitch the show. And it went over pretty well. Uh, they were really funny. They were just, it was, it was just a great, great cast. They were hilarious, they were funny. They had everybody laugh. And I believe when we went to Buna Murray, uh, the, the development executive, he was like almost in tears. He was laughing so hard. I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty funny. And as we were walking out of that meeting, we literally got a phone call uh, on our way to the car asking us to come back the next day. So long story short is we ended up shopping it around to a few different places. And we ended up uh, teaming up with a production company uh, and they've done quite a few different shows out there. And what happened in this case is they ended up creating the sizzle reel, which was at least, uh, I, you know, I'm not sure, a few ten, tens of thousands of dollars to, to produce it. Uh, so there's always ways that you can create your own sizzle reel, which I talk about. But in this case, the objective was to see if we could get a production company to create the sizzle reel. And we did. And so they took that sizzle reel and then they started sending it out to the networks. So it's basically you team up with a production company. That production company has connections to the networks and then they actually will shop a show to the networks. And then usually they may have a certain network that they work with a lot and like Buna Murray, pretty much anything on MTV is, comes from Buna Murray. Um, they did the Kardashians as well, along with a uh, partner with Ryan Seacrest on that. So they went ahead and they started shopping it around. And um, ultimately, I, I believe it got a pass. I think maybe we were ahead of our times because later on there was a similar show that, that came on. But I also feel like one of the, uh, the problems, well, just one of the ways that it wasn't handled correctly, I feel, it's my opinion, is that they should have brought the girls with them to the networks. That would have sold them. But instead they opted just to send a sizzle reel out via email. You know, so you don't know who's going to get it on, on their end. It could be, you know, just some intern or something. So unfortunately, I think that's what, what happened because we had such a great response when we took them out together. But that, I'll show you the sizzle reel here, actually. That came from um, the fact that it was an opportunity that, that happened that we weren't, uh, you know, that just happened to, to come up when we were casting. So, okay, let me switch here so you can I'll show you this is a real so basically this is the concept that we came up with on paper right as I said we we created this on came up with the idea brainstormed it came up with it we had the cast and then we created the potential storylines and if anybody's joining us right now um the uh most most docuseries are scripted to a degree they shoot several storylines and then they will take that storyline that's working the best and they'll end up uh, enhancing that, so to speak. So after we had created the paper and we had sent that out to the, 
to um, the different production companies and different the production company ended up creating a sizzle reel. So I want to show you that real quick here. Okay. My name is Tracy Bingham. When I was in my 20s, I was on, on Baywatch. Oh my God. <laughs> Since then, I was married, divorced, <clears throat> engaged, dumb. So I decided to move back to Boston to be with my family. Hi! <laughs> my family is so loud, it's obnoxious. You look like something on Disney or crap. You want to be with them, but you don't want to be with them. You got to like, boo, boo. Okay, you probably need a little it's bit of Boston. that. But at the same token, it's my family and it's familiar and I miss it. You're moving back to Boston. <laughs> and that's what it's about. I'm answering the question. Jenna, is my eldest sister and my manager? Don't cross me. Snap out of it! I can be a bitch on wheels. Her husband okay. looks at her and he goes, honey. Will you stop talking about my husband? You don't have one. My other sister, Britt, hasn't had sex with her husband in how many months? In whose business is it? It's our business because you told us. The middle-aged, desperate women that they look at my relationship and all they have to do is judge me. Do you believe Neil said I look like RuPaul's Drag Race? Do I look a like a drag bit. queen? A little bit. Why? I look like a drag queen? They've spent their whole lives trying to develop their public persona and they want me to change like them. Are you willing to go and improve yourself? I don't think I need any improvement. They call my breast fried eggs. Flapjacks. They're natural. And they're small. You just really quick, uh, if anybody's out there, can you hear the actual audio of the video? Because I really don't know if, if uh, the audio is coming through. So if, if you guys can let me know, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'll keep playing it here. Oh, you can't hear the audio. Okay. You were double D when you were pregnant. But that was a purpose. What's your purpose? Because you can get anything you want looking like this. I'm offering bettering yourself. Is that a word in bettering? I have had Botox, wrestling and collagen, microdermabrasion on my skin, toe Damage surgery. Toes. And the jury is out still on my boobs. The yeah, jury's okay. still out? Was it like the OJ trial? Uh People here are not impressed with that whole LA thing. And hold on, and if you want to make it here, you better kind of like adapt to what's going on. I think the Tracy's fake, phony, plastic, pretentious, the black LA bimbo. So, so you're saying, are we like aliens here on the East Coast? Yes, and in a sense you are. Neil, and he's my brother, but he's a whiny little bitch. This is this is reality. So, this is intense well, time. Wait, 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 wait a second. Fun. Listen. Tracy had to zip up the cleavage, put on a business suit, take out the trash, water the grass. <laughs> Tom's coming at me like, who do you think you are? But who the hell is he to judge as well? The world loves me because I'm fun. Can you I... just say the world loves me? They do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the three sisters together? I'm not sure who's the stable one of the three. She's been married twice and both the guys divorced her. Shut your fucking mouth. It could be an explosive situation. Everything's I'm like Black Barbie, but I don't care, I'm not. Why is it because the way that I look, that I'm that person? Not that I want people to respect me, but I do. I'm gonna take you to dick sucking school. <laughs> you need it. We fight, we get ugly, but these are the women that would give you anything you ask for. Literally. I have to make sure she brings her A game here. Put your whole Baywatch ditzy personality behind you. Who are any of you to say how I should perfect my life. I'm not waiting anymore. I would kill to have a beautiful child, but I was like doing Hollywood. Meanwhile, I've always wanted to have a little baby like I won't. We could have had it Okay, so I personally think that that was um, that was a great a great sizzle reel. Obviously, they edited it um, <laughs> to create some controversy, but I think it would have been a great show. And I think it's too bad that unfortunately um, it didn't get picked up. And um, sometimes you will go into a room and pitch to network executives, and they will um, they'll just glaze over. They don't get it. We had a few people who didn't understand it. But the, the gist of this is to show you that 
you can see an opportunity, whether that be maybe you, you know, some crazy people working in a donut shop or you have some crazy relatives and you can create a show around them and then get out there and pitch that show. So basically this was an example of an opportunity, then, then going and putting it down on paper and then getting it out to the uh, production companies and shopping it around. And so I, I'm glad you liked it there, Georgie. Do you have any questions since we're here on uh, a reality show? But basically all that is covered in uh, the Udemy class that I've, I've created. And if you uh, click on the, uh, on a QR co code there, it's down about 75% off. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, um, it's, it's got some, a lot of examples It's about two hours long and I'm going to do more of these. This is the first one I've done. I'm going to do a lot more of these. I'm going to have, um, some of my, my friends, my Hollywood friends, uh, come on and, and do some, uh, Q and A with them and, uh, find out what they're up to, but Thanks everybody who, who joined or who's seeing this afterwards. And I hope you learned something, but uh, for an in-depth dive, go ahead and check out the course. Uh, send me some uh, emails if you like, or find me on, on the Facebook uh, uh, page that I've created. So thank you. Uh, Georgie, do you, before I leave, do you have any uh, questions here? I don't want to leave if you have a question about anything creating a show. Okay, your question is, let me uh, show this question. So her question is, I already have a concept, two production companies wanted to make it, but it's stuck because a higher up doesn't want it to approve it. Yeah, that does happen. Actually that happened with uh, the show I'm talking about. Um, one of the uppers hires, didn't want to um, create it. So we went somewhere else, but so your show's about kids. Uh, it depends if you're, what kind of feedback you're getting, like why is it not getting passed? Hopefully they can give you some feedback on, on this is have to do with the kids that because they're, they're underage or what it might be. Um, also, it just may not, maybe you're, you haven't, gone to the right production companies. It's it's hard to say because sometimes the management will change and you may get, you may have originally some, some people that are very, the higher up is a judge, a judge as in he sits in a courtroom, right? I think that's what you mean, like an actual judge. If that's the case, are, my question is, is the judge part of the show? Are you bringing the judge to the show? So, so he's a judge in Los Angeles. So you'd have to get his cooperation or he's just somebody doesn't want it to happen. So I, it sounds like your circumstances have to do with, with what you're trying to make the show about if you have a judge involved. Um, so without knowing more about it, it would be hard to give you an answer on, on why it's not going forward, but it does sound like you have a, um, well, you got a concept that got into a couple of production companies. I mean, that's really hard to do. So right there, you're already ahead of the game. Uh, okay. So the, they're foster kids. So yeah, I could see how a judge would have to be involved in that. Uh, I'm, so you're basically doing a docu-series and you're going to feature either a particular program that has to do with kids, or you're going to feature a house that has foster kids. That's what my, that's what I'm getting from what you're saying here. So basically in her case, she's trying to do a docuseries. It sounds like she's got um, an issue with the fact that she's gone to a couple of production companies and they liked the idea, but then it got stuck at, at a higher level, uh, maybe because it has to do with, uh, uh, you know, a judge and 
maybe Los Angeles County or, or something like that. So yeah, so I, I don't I don't know what to tell you about that. But the good news is you actually did get to a production company and you pitched it and you had a few people who liked it and it went up the chain and then it got caught. And that happens. That's happened to us several times as well. Uh, and it's a bummer. So I don't know. Hey, you, you came up with one concept. I think you come up with another concept and just uh, do what you're doing. Keep uh, Keep pitching the shows. Okay. Well, Georgie, thank you. I appreciate the question. And for those of you that uh, tune in later, I uh, hope you uh, check out the course. So is it just dead in the water? I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't know all, all the, all the uh, moving parts to it. Uh, if you want, I can talk with you offline about it. Uh, I do do some consulting from time to time. Uh, and sometimes if there's a show that is, uh, that really appeals to me, I'll, I'll see if I can take it over to some of the production companies that I, that I have connections to, but thank you so much, Georgie. And thank you for tuning in. If you did, and if you catch this later and you have any questions, go ahead and, uh, just put those questions in the Facebook, put that on at the bottom of my, of my Facebook page where, where you can go see that. Okay. Thanks again. Remember, take a take those opportunities and turn them into shows. Okay. Bye everybody.